YouTube, what is good? Yo, I cave finally bit the bullet. Got the XH1 battery grip. We'll go ahead and put this on the camera when I get to the office. It is a rainy, dark day out here in Atlanta. What's funny is, two hours ago, completely sunny. So the original plan for today's video has kind of changed. I'll explain to you what's going on when we get to the office. So the original plan for today was to photograph this mural project going on around the city. It's called Outer Space Project. It's awesome. They're making all these new murals all over the place, but obviously nobody's painting murals in weather like this. So now we got to adjust the plan a little bit. I think we're going to do some rainy day street photography. office waiting for the rain to stop now we're gonna head into the city do a little bit of rainy slash wet ground street photography y'all know i love the vibe of a rainy day and some street photos we're rolling with the punches and uh nothing's gonna stop us from making great photos All right, we made it into Midtown. We got about one hour to shoot today. There's a lot of activity going on, a lot of people around, everybody's getting off work. We're gonna hang out around here as well as over by Art Center Station. It's a train station I've never photographed before, never shot in the vlog, figured today's a better time than ever to try it out. You guys know how it goes on this channel. We're gonna jump into GoPro mode. I'll give you all the behind the scenes, the settings, my thoughts, all that good stuff. So no more wasting time, GoPro mode, let's get it. Coming in hot with that voiceover. So the first thing I'm doing right now is switching to my 16 millimeter lens. I found a tucked off spot with this overhang to try to keep the camera dry. I think it worked out. Yo guys, do me a solid on this video. Hit that thumbs up button for me. It helps out the channel. Right now what I'm doing is checking to make sure no water got on the sensor. Everything looks good. I kind of like this setup right here with this garage door, the arrow, the overhang. We might use that in the future. So this right now walking down the street, this is a photo we've tried to make in the past and it just so happened I was walking down this kind of tree tunnel. There's three guys with umbrellas ahead of me trying to make a photo. Once again, I swear this photo is possible to capture this tree tunnel, but you need to be way far back with like a 200 millimeter. So walking up to the train station that we were going to photograph today, and at the last second I decided, you know, let's head back out, let's photograph a little more of the outside world. So I walk across the street to this atrium, and what I'm looking for is an isolated subject against an interesting background. So we get some contrast of maybe a popping umbrella, you know, some popping colors versus a dark background or vice versa. And what I notice is this guy over here. So you can see me trying to be all slick, looking like I'm taking a photo. And then I keep moving to the right. And we come up with this image right here. Looks pretty cool. I like how he's framed in the door. It's kind of mysterious, kind of dark looking. Uh, definitely a decent little warm up shot. So I start walking back down this courtyard and I notice this symmetry going on with the lines on the ground, the trees, the light pole, and then the scene in general just looks really nice with the water on the ground and that symmetry mixed and then the perfect subject walks into our photo this guy with a crazy colorful umbrella at the time I made this photo I was kind of so so on it I wasn't really feeling it but it's starting to grow on me for sure my settings on this one ISO 2000 16 millimeter f 4.5 1 250th of a second so I did 1 250 of a second just to make sure any motion that was in the photo was crisp and sharp and ISO 2000 was because I was using a polarizer. So the polarizer does take a little bit of light out of your lens and out of your sensor. So you need to compensate that with a little bit of a higher ISO. Luckily ISO 2000 wasn't much of an issue on this shot. And the polarizer was great because it pulled a lot of glare off the ground. And as you can see, it definitely, definitely helps out the photo not having that glare. It kind of flattens everything out. So now we are headed into that train station. Now I've never been to this train station before. I've stopped here like inside a train, but I've never gotten out and explored 
So I'm kind of working on the fly, getting my bearings, figuring out what is around me. Now there's about four stairwells in here. Each one looks similar. And this is the first one that I noticed. But later on, I made this photo right here in a similar stairwell. It's pretty cool. It's got a mysterious vibe. The only thing wrong with it, our subject is not in the right place. They needed to be closer to that wall, silhouetted, really highlighted by that light illuminating the wall. I think that would have made the photo a lot more interesting. It is pretty cool because of how it's framed with the ceiling, the escalator slash stairs, and then that pillar right there, really setting your eye up for something to be going on in front of that wall. Unfortunately, there just wasn't anything interesting today. So I keep exploring this station, and unfortunately, I didn't make any more photos that I really like, but one of the main things that stood out about this location is the amount of potential there is to make interesting photos that work off of light and dark areas. Because of the lighting, because of the wall colors, there's so many different things you can do, and these photos right here, they're examples of what is possible. Now, I don't like any of these photos. I kept the edits simple, but they definitely show the potential of this location when it comes to framing, light and dark areas, what you can do with silhouettes and subjects. So this is a place that I am very, very likely to come back to sometime in the future. Day two out here on this vlog. Yo, it is obviously still nasty and rainy out here in Atlanta. Check out this cloud. It is definitely raining over there. It's like imminent doom down in the city. Right here, we're still kind of dry, but doesn't look like it's gonna last very long. Yo, so this is what ended up happening earlier today. So because it was raining, nobody was out painting those murals that I was talking about yesterday. So I did get to see one that was finished though. This guy I've been really looking forward to. His name's It's a Living. I think he's from New York. He does a lot of lettering and stuff like that. His murals are really cool. He painted one in Atlanta and I got to check it out today. The only reason I didn't get a photo of it is because the lift was still in the way. Yo, so today I had a few things to shoot at Epitome ATL and one of them was really interesting. It's these right here. It's a pair of Pumas and they collabed with Polaroid. Pretty interesting. I just wanted to show you guys these because obviously it's a channel about photography and these are a very rare photography themed shoe. So we won't go long on this, but check it out. Box, got a Polaroid on there, Polaroid Puma. You open it up, you got the paper with the Puma and Polaroid. Then the shoe is pretty low key and toned down. I like it when they do collabs like this and they don't go too crazy. Got the Polaroid there. Got the uh, classic little Polaroid rainbow with Puma right through there. Nothing too crazy, a pretty understated collab, but I just thought they were interesting and wanted to show you guys because like I said, it's extremely rare that they do a camera themed sneaker for pretty much any brand. So let's go ahead and wrap this episode up. We accomplished the goal. We left with one photo that I'm happy with. It is this image right here. Now what's funny about this photo, when I was out shooting and I made this image, I was like, I'm not really feeling it. It's way too simple, but sometimes, and in this case, simple works. Sometimes simple is the easiest thing to register. It's the easiest thing to understand. And in this case, it's very easy to get a feeling from this photo, or at least that's the way I feel. I don't know, I look at it and it, it just, it's like nostalgic. It just feels like something. It could be the colors, it could be kind of the darker tones, it could be the fact that the umbrella is popping, it could be the way the lighting is falling right into the middle. Everything works on this one and I really like it. I understand that some people might say it's too simple and you know that's a matter of opinion. But for me this one kind of falls in line with the style of photos I've been having lately, kind of that Edward Hopper vibe I've been going with. So this one is the winner on the day. If I rank it out of 10 I'm going to go ahead and give it I think maybe a 3.5, but just the lighting, the colors, everything works. And once I clean it up and just get that ground extra perfect, it's gonna be even better. So I'll probably share this one on Instagram eventually. It just depends on how the grid is set up. So be on the lookout for that. As for the Fuji X-H1 battery grip, yeah, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous, but it's convenient because now I can just charge my batteries through this thing. I don't have to bring two battery chargers with me. And honestly, once I started using this lens right here, it's so heavy that the whole concept of this being like a smaller, lightweight, compact camera just went out the window. So I figured, hey, why not embrace the uh, large size that I'm giving myself by using this? And uh, 
just take it to level 100. So once again, if you guys want me to talk about this lens, the 16 to 55, I absolutely love it, but you guys know I don't do a lot of reviews and stuff like that. So let me know in the comments. And also one other question, this video is a 10 minute or over video. I know it's gonna be over 10 minutes. The one on Monday was six minutes. So I did a little experiment with that video. I changed the format a little bit because I wanted to see if y'all enjoyed it compared to the normal longer vlogs. Main reason being, it's easier for me to edit a six minute video and that means I can get out to shoot more, which is why you guys got two vlogs this week instead of one vlog and a tutorial video. So let me know in the comments, do you prefer the more long form video like this one or the shorter six minute vlog like Monday? But I think that's it for me today. I'm gonna get out of here. Oh, one last thing, low key, the best photos of the day though were those Puma images. Those things are crazy. I really like the way those came out and that was like a 30 minute shoot that I didn't include in the vlog. So also be on the lookout for those. I'll most likely post those on Twitter and Instagram as well. I'm feeling those, those things are dope. I need to do more like portrait people stuff on this channel. It's just really difficult to coordinate. So that's it for me today, guys. Y'all have a great weekend. Thank you so much for coming out to shoot with me. Hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.